Welcome to Equity and Excellence, the E-squared solution from Creative Leadership Solutions. I'm Doug Reeves, and I really appreciate you taking a few minutes to join us. In this video, we're going to be talking about the professional practice of nonfiction writing. From kindergarten through 12th grade, this is one of the most powerful ideas you will hear. It has a robust research support, literally from where I started the research more than 20 years ago, to research in the 2020s by Professor Stephen Graham, myself, and many others who have found a clear and consistent link. When students write more, and more particularly, when they write to describe, to persuade, to compare, to evaluate, that is, nonfiction writing and argumentative writing and persuasive writing in particular, it helps them in every other domain. It makes them better readers. It helps them in mathematics, helps them in science and social studies, just helps them in general develop their critical thinking faculties. It'll help you in every single thing that you do. And I, I know the pushback I always hear. Well, Doug, I, I don't have time for writing. I'm a math teacher. I don't have time for writing. I'm a social studies teacher. I respect that. But if that were true, here's what the data should show. Those science and social studies and math teachers who did spend time on writing should have lower scores because, after all, that writing stuff takes time and they weren't covering all their curriculum, so their score should go down. 20 years of evidence says that exactly the opposite is true. The teachers who spent more time on writing had better scores, even on multiple choice tests, in science, in writing, in mathematics, and in reading comprehension. Too often we think that language development is linear, that is, we speak, then we read, then we write. It's not true. Language development is holistic, and writing is one of the best ways to improve speaking, improve reading comprehension. This is particularly true for our English language learners. When they are put on the spot to speak, they are filled with defensiveness and fear and emotion. Let us write. Let us write at our own pace in a safe environment. That way we can express ourselves. I admit sometimes with pretty inventive spellings, but when we can do that, we can express ourselves without the emotional trauma of being put on the spot to speak in front of 20, 30, 35 of our classmates. Finally, I need to let you know that this happens in the best equity and excellence schools, not just in ELA, in every grade, in every class, every month. Do I really mean every class in band? Yes, state band champion in one state has students writing every week how they play alone and how they play together. I've seen writing in art classes, having students demonstrate deep understanding of different media and different artists that they would have never been able to articulate otherwise. I see great examples of writing in mathematics classes where students are explaining the relationships between variables and how a graph might be extended. Rather than just filling out worksheets in science and social studies, students writing about the maps and writing about the uh, time-appropriate editorials in social studies, writing about scientific discoveries and the scientific method in science. It's not just about the answer. It's about critical reasoning and expression. And when we do this every month, in every subject, in every grade, it works. Finally, friends, don't let anybody tell you that it's developmentally inappropriate for little kids to write. In the same building in the last year, I saw kindergartners writing not just words, sentences, indeed consecutive sentences that made sense together. In a few feet down the hallway, in a third grade, they were only writing on post-it notes because the teacher explained it really wasn't developmentally appropriate for third graders to do that kind of writing. Friends, that's not about developmental appropriateness. That is all about our expectations. And don't let anybody tell you that our preschool and our kindergartners cannot write. They can, and I'll tell you how you know that. In rich kids' schools, they write all the time. If it was really about brain development, it ought to affect everybody's brain. When you see people using the term developmentally inappropriate to avoid writing for our youngest children, that's not about the brain. It's not about development. It's about low expectations, and you and I have to fight it. As a result, nonfiction writing, one of the most powerful things we can do, and don't dump this on the footstep of our English language arts teachers or blocks. We all own this in every subject, every grade. Thanks for listening.